They bring color and class to the catwalk, introducing new styles and trends. The extraordinary Manolo Blahnik, the lavish Cartier, the creative Philip Tracy, sexy and seductive Victoria's Secret, and Harry Winston, jeweler to the stars. Renowned for his exotic and expensive heels, Manolo Blahnik is the luxury shoemaker to the stars and anyone else who can afford them. Manolo, Manolo, Manolo Blahnik. Blahnik is known for his eclectic approach to design. His mix of style, shapes, fabrics and colors reflect his strong affinity to different cultures and his skill in extracting their essence. Studded with diamonds, emeralds, beads, feathers and fur, Blahnik's leather, silk and satin slippers are loved by celebrities who share his admiration for all things beautiful. There's an element of sex in everything you do, you know, so I think it's, in shoes it's very limiting, you know. What can you do with shoes apart from the décolleté and the crack of the toes or, or the beautiful accentuated, the beautiful ankle or maybe the curve of the thing. What do you do? I mean, so you have to, it's always, it's an element of sex, the feet. Sexy, I mean, it's the nicest part of the body. Born in the Canary Islands in 1942, he was educated at home before studying law in Geneva. After dropping out of university in 1965, he lived in Paris and London, hoping to become a theatre designer. Blahnik's success is most likely owed to US Vogue fashion editor Diana Vreeland, who took one look at his sketches and suggested he give up theatre and design shoes instead. He started by designing men's shoes in brilliantly coloured forms of the vintage co-respondent shoes he loved from old movies for the boutique he would later purchase Zapata in Chelsea. During this time, he would also visit factories to learn the process of shoemaking. It was in the 1970s that Blahnik revived the stiletto and since then has constantly experimented with unconventional forms of materials such as metals and plastics. His shoes began to grow a huge following, with fashion magazine editors and young Hollywood stars all wanting a pair of Manolos. And now, he is shoemaker to some of the world's most famous women. In 2003, the celebrity cobbler introduced an exhibition of his footwear at London's Design Museum. The exhibition features rare prototypes of some of his more unusual creations, as well as sketches and memorabilia from his own private archive. For anyone who wanted to experience Manolo's genius but couldn't afford it, this was the place to be. The exhibition spans across 30 years of Blahnik's career and shows how he has been influenced by fashion gurus like Yves Saint Laurent and Cristobal Balenciaga. He has also collaborated with designer John Galliano, with whom he worked at the fashion house Dior in the 1990s. Blahnik's shoes have been considered works of art and received a cult status when they made their appearance on the popular television series Sex and the City. Blahnik likes to be involved in every step of his shoes production as they are painstakingly crafted over a period of several days. The process begins with Blahnik sketching the designs at his home or in one of his offices, followed by chiseling a last to create the mold. In 2008, Manolo Blahnik was walking on air when the city of Beverly Hills awarded the Shoemeister with the Rodeo Drive Walk of Style Award. A variety of famous feet were on hand to celebrate the handmade shoemaker's tribute, such as Hilary Duff and January Jones, all donning Manolo's creations. For comic actress Jennifer Coolidge, the love affair with Manolo's shoes started when she was a struggling actress in Hollywood. Also on hand for the Rodeo Drive event were Nikki Hilton and Lucy Liu, with Liu revealing she felt Blahnik knows the quickest way to a woman's heart. My first pair of Manolos I bought in New York, um, and I was at Bergdorf, um, and it was such a, an incredible moment. Manolo Blahnik, man and label, is about so much more than footwear and toe cleavage. For the last 30 years, he's been creating an entire world below the ankle, a world of sex, aspiration and desire, personified by the women who buy his shoes.
as the number one seller of luxury jewelry in the world, Cartier, the French jeweler and watchmaker, has become known for its sparkling accessories that only the rich can afford. Founded in Paris in 1847 by Louis-Francois Cartier, the company bared the name of the family of jewelers who became famous for creating some of the world's most magnificent accessories and pieces of jewelry, from necklaces to rings and watches, to even one of the company's most prestigious designs, the mystery clock. Cartier's collections feature beautiful and sometimes unusual items, such as rings, pendants, earrings and necklaces from the Cartier Panvert range. Emerald eyes, onyx nose and studded collar decorated this panther necklace to form a panther's head, which is joined to an exquisite chain featuring more diamonds than any of us could dream of. Since Cartier's establishment, it has been the crown jeweler to 19 royal families and countless celebrities, and in doing so has created some of the largest and most impressive pieces ever, like the astounding necklace that was commissioned by the Indian Maharaja of Patiala in 1928. Designed in the 1920s, it boasted a total of 2,930 diamonds, and after being fully restored in 1998, it was exhibited at the jeweler's store in Paris. The necklace was made to ornate a masculine chest and to symbolize the wealth and the power of its owner. Cartier has lent their jewelry to a number of high-profile celebrities over the years, including actress Deborah Messing, who attended the Emmy Awards in over $300,000 worth of diamonds. Jessica Alba looked radiant at the 2008 Academy Awards with stunning Cartier diamond hoop earrings that were set in yellow gold and retailed for $92,000. Plus, she wore a set of three bracelets. One was a priceless ruby and diamond bracelet set in yellow and white gold, with the other two totaling over $80,000. Attending the same Academy Awards flaunting Cartier was Renée Zellweger. Wearing all vintage jewels, which featured a variety of diamonds, her look was made complete with Cartier's private collection flower diamond brooch from the 1940s. In 2006, stars from the worlds of fashion, art, music and cinema were at the Cartier Mansion on New York's Fifth Avenue to launch a new charity initiative being mounted by the prestigious jewellery firm, which features their Love Collection and Love Charity Bracelet. The Rose Gold Mini Love Bracelet comes in a variety of colours from black to baby pink. These were chosen by different celebrities to raise money for their chosen charity. This is the, the typical love bracelet, but they are done a different version, in different colors. Um, for, for each charity, it's going to be a different color, and they're going to be selling it to the public, and we're going to be getting money out of it, all the different charities. The original love bracelet with its modern screw motif was introduced in 1969 and became one of the most recognizable jewelry designs in the world. It was made famous by celebrities such as Elizabeth Taylor and Sophia Loren and is still extremely popular with Hollywood celebrities today. In 2007, Russia was host to an exhibition featuring Cartier's unique jewellery collections. The exhibition, featuring 165 pieces, included watches, tiaras, rings, diadems and necklaces, which date back from the beginning of the 20th century to 1970s. This event had Russians rushing to get a closer look at the chapter of the history of European jewellery not available for them to see during Soviet times. Cartier, whose innovations with various styles such as Art Deco, Garland and Tutti Frutti strongly influenced the development of jewellery over the last century. They have been hailed the jeweller to the kings, king of jewellers, and now have one of the most successful watch brand and a jewellery brand that's recognised worldwide. Irish-born designer Philip Treacy has created some of the world's most outrageous, dramatic and dazzling hats and headpieces, continually wowing his fans. Born in the small village of County Galway, west of Ireland, Treacy began experimenting with clothing and design from a very young age, often creating outfits and hats for his sister's doll. 
By the mid-1980s, he had moved to Dublin to study at the National College of Art and Design, where he began designing hats as an extra interest. After a few years of study, Tracy took one of his designs to a fashion magazine director and its editor, Isabella Blow. It was after meeting Isabella that his career catapulted. As an international style icon, Isabella was the muse for many up-and-coming designers and was often credited with discovering models and designers, one being Tracy. After graduating college with honours, Tracy set up shop in Isabella's basement and was soon working with some of the biggest haute couture houses, including Chanel, Valentino and Alexander McQueen. The milliner and creator of fantasy hats is now a five-time winner of the British Accessory Designer of the Year Award, having won them all during the 1990s. 1996 was the first time Tracy had put on a show in New York, even though his hats had appeared in the collections of some of the greatest designers. And he couldn't have had a much better welcome, the audience lapped up his work. In 1998, the Irish hat designer stunned audiences with his style and version of femininity. He received a standing ovation after presenting a stunning array of hats and headpieces to a packed audience of international buyers and journalists at London Fashion Week, with porcupine spines, elegant feathers and stiff netting to create a dramatic 1998 autumn winter collection. Drawing inspiration from the planets, hats sculpted from luminescent materials glowed as the lights were dimmed, and for Tracy, designing practical hats was not a major concern. His 1999 show was just as spectacular, with designs featuring feathers, spikes and fluorescent plastic hanging mobiles, with the piece de resistance, a towering fantasy castle. In 2002 saw Tracy's creations displayed in an exhibition at the Design Museum in London. The show was dedicated to his good friend and muse Isabella Blow and showcased the beautiful and intricate works he created for her during the 1990s. Some of his works have been described as surreal, whereas others have been called sculptures, but it's not just his designs that attract people, it's his use of vibrant colours. In 2007, Alexander McQueen, along with Tracy, turned his Paris Haute Couture show into an emotional tribute to Isabella, who sadly passed. Models paraded in her signature look of radical tailoring, paired with Tracy's outlandish hats and mind-blowing headgear, with a cluster of red butterflies and a glittering black lace visor. Tracy credited Isabella with inventing his and McQueen's careers. You know, fashion is about many things, but also it's about an emotion. And sometimes there's a human aspect involved. And she was somebody who loved fashion, and she loved him. And she believed in his creativity when nobody did. And so it was a very um, emotional experience for all of us. But. Uh, she was the least sentimental person I knew, and she would have had no time for any sentiment. The two also helped Sex and the City's Sarah Jessica Parker to wow crowds when she turned up for the premiere of her film, wearing the Queen's gown and Tracy's unusual design that photographers couldn't get enough of. His designs are unusual and creative, but he's a genius at what he does. Having come from a small town, he experimented with anything he could, from different materials to feathers from his mother's chickens. He's not scared of trying new designs, but it's his bravery and commitment that has made him a major player in the world of accessories and fashion. Known for its sexy fashion shows and catalogues that men actually like to browse through, Victoria's Secret is one of America's largest and most successful lingerie lines. Established in the 1970s by a man who felt embarrassed when purchasing lingerie for his wife, Victoria's Secret was all about creating a comfortable environment for men with helpful staff and underwear mounted in wall frames that were easier to look at rather than racks and racks of underwear. Not long after opening the first store, a mail order catalogue was created, and so was the love affair between men and Victoria's Secret. Now over 400 million copies of the world-famous catalogue are sent out each year. This 
seductive brand by the early 90s had grown into one of America's largest underwear retailers, with figures reaching $1 billion, but has since gone on to create more than just lingerie. It also features beauty products such as makeup and fragrances, as well as swimwear and women's wear. The early 90s also saw the company begin its collaboration with supermodels for its advertising campaigns and fashion shows. The Victoria's Secret Angels were introduced to the world in the late 1990s under the brand's most talked about and media-friendly models and spokeswomen, being on hand for many of the company's store openings and introductions of new products and lines. In recent years, Victoria's Secret has introduced us to new makeup, such as very sexy makeup, which featured glosses for seductive lips to bronzers for glowing skin. It was a tightly edited portfolio of 30 high-performance formulas and 200 must-have runway-ready shades. 2008 saw the opening of the company's flagship store in New York City, and while it's not the biggest store in the chain, it's certainly the most unique. Here, customers can purchase products they cannot purchase anywhere else. It has a fragrance bar where customers can design their own scent, a monogram service will embroider any garment, and there's even a personal shopper to help primarily male customers find that perfect gift. And 2008 seemed a busy year for the Angels because it also marked the 10th anniversary since the beginning of the iconic models, and to celebrate, they held an exhibition at their New York store. On display were costumes from their runway shows from 1998 to the present, as well as other honorary items the Angels received over the years, including their star from the Hollywood Walk of Fame and the 12-foot-long angel wings that were worn by Heidi Klum. The giant wings worn by the models during their catwalk shows have now become known as their fashion trademark. Eight also saw Victoria's Secret, most sophisticated, ultra-feminine collection of lingerie and loungewear it's ever created, with supermodel obsessions, as well as the first time the women's lingerie chain sold swimwear in its 300 stores across the United States. Known for their lavish on-stage displays, in 1995, the flirtatious brand held their first fashion show, which was said to be the lingerie event of the century. The Victoria's Secret Fashion Show tends to draw a lot of attention each year for bringing the world's most famous faces and scantily clad bodies to the airwaves. Working around the clock to make sure everything is ready, the show features mostly lingerie and the million dollar jeweled fantasy bra. Over the years, it has evolved into a wild event with various themes, special performances and extravagant costumes that have made women across the world love Victoria's Secret and the men loving the women wearing Victoria's Secret. The House of Harry Winston has sold jewellery to the rich and famous for many years. Well known to everybody, he's considered one of the most famous jewellers in the world. Born in the late 1800s, Winston's career in jewellery and as a gem trader began at a young age with the help of his father who was a jeweller. When in his early teens, he purchased a two-carat emerald from a pawn shop for only 25 cents. Two days later, he sold it for $800 and the Harry Winston empire was underway. Throughout his career, he owned some of the most famous jewels around, and he became known for his lack of using security around costly items, even opting to use the post to send jewels, rather than a more secure method. Such as the Hope Diamond, which in 1958 had a value of $1 million. It was the biggest blue diamond in the world at 44 and a half carats, and with a history of tragedy for its owners. However, Winston presented it to the Smithsonian Institution by registered post. It was transported by normal delivery and following a short unwrapping, was handed over in a ceremony by Winston to the institution. 
The strange and checkered history of the Hope Blue Diamond is as spellbinding as the gem itself. Winston was also the owner of the world's third largest diamond, the Star of Sierra Leone. The diamond weighed 970 carats, almost 22 kilograms, and was shown in major museums around the world before being eventually cut into 17 individual diamonds. During the 1920s, Winston transformed jewelry in a way that gave stones a completely new look. He had a skill at turning old-fashioned jewelry into modern-day works of art, which were then purchased by high society people. Although we're seeing beautiful, classical, feminine, glamorous looks, it's all various um, interpretations of glamour. There's no single trend. Um, we're seeing everything from very traditional, classical jewelry to unusual colors, um, not just red rubies and blue sapphires, but also an interest in bright, vibrant pink sapphires. One of his most famous sayings is, people will stare, make it worth their while. And that's what he did. If you want Harry Winston jewelry, you need to be prepared to pay the price. Engagement rings started around $15,000. Winston and his company have also dressed more Oscar winners than anyone else in the history of the Academy Awards, a tradition that he began in the 1940s. Some of his creations that have appeared on the red carpet include the colored diamond and garnet bracelet that was designed to match the gown worn by Halle Berry at the 2002 Academy Awards. Young actress Andrea Bowen attended the Screen Actors Guild Awards with diamonds and pink sapphires from the legendary jewelry makers. But Winston doesn't just loan his jewelry to the stars, they're also willing to pay the price. When Ben Affleck bought Jennifer Lopez a Harry Winston engagement ring, he spent over $1 million for a six carat pink diamond. Christina Onassis, the daughter of Greek shipping tycoon Aristotle Onassis, was also the owner of Harry Winston jewelry, and in mid-2008, a collection of her jewels went under the hammer at Christie's Auction House in London, including a sapphire and diamond necklace estimated at around $160,000 to $200,000. The necklace was accompanied by a 14.79 carat diamond ring of Onassis's, also designed by Harry Winston, and was expected to fetch up to $900,000. Even after his death in 1978, everyone still wants a piece of his revolutionary jewelry and are amazed at the creations of this amazing jeweler whose name has continued for years and will undoubtedly continue for many more.